All right, for today's lesson, we're going to look at the quadratic formula. Our objectives are to understand the quadratic formula, to understand the derivative, and to use the quadratic formula. The vocabulary necessary, the quadratic formula, is something used to find roots using general form and the formula xr equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The derivative, part of the quadratic formula that tells the number of roots, b squared minus 4ac. If you remember, with quadratics, we could have zero roots, one root, or two roots. The derivative tells us which we're going to get. So what is the quadratic formula? Well, to use the quadratic formula, first we need general form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The a value is always what's in front of our x squared. The b value is always what's in front of our x. And the c is always what's b on its own. Second is we have this long formula. xr stands for the x value of the roots. We've got a negative b, meaning it's always going to be the opposite of what b is. So if b is positive, it's going to be negative. If b is negative, it's going to be positive. We're going to square b, subtract 4 times a times c, and then square root it. And one of the keys is, because we're square rooting, we have to add or subtract. And then at the end, we're going to divide by 2a. The discriminant is this b squared minus 4ac part, the part in the square root. Well, if this ends up being 0, that means that we're going to get one root. If the discriminant ends up being a positive number, well, if you square root a positive, you're going to get a positive answer and a negative answer, meaning we'll get two roots. If the discriminant ends up being a negative number, well, we've already talked that square rooting a negative doesn't really work. So we're going to get no roots in that situation. Now, we need to look at where the quadratic formula really came from. So it all starts with completing the square and general form. So we took y out. We put 0 in its place because we're looking for roots. To complete the square, we have to move the c to the other side. So I've subtracted c on both sides to give us negative c equals ax squared plus bx. Every time we're completing the square, we found that it was, or we typically tried to use problems where the a value is 1. So to get rid of a, we have to divide everything by a. That gives us this problem right here. Well, now we're on to making our perfect square so that we can finish completing the square. What we have is a positive ba. So we want to cut that in half. We're going to get b over 2a, because dividing by 2, we're going to get a um, 2 on the bottom there. And then we have to square it to find out what we're going to add to both sides. So this is going to give us b squared. 2 squared is going to give us 4. And a squared is going to give us a squared. We're going to take this value and add it to both sides. So here I've got b squared minus 4a squared. And, or b squared over 4a squared. And here we've got plus b squared over 4a squared. Then what I have to do is these don't have common denominators, so I need common denominators. This has 4a squared, this has a, so I need a 4 and another a. So 4 and a squared. If I put it on the bottom, I have to also put that on the top. So there's a 4a that we're going to add in. Then we can write this as one cohesive problem, which looks like this top here b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Then I've written this, uh, this part right here as the perfect square, x plus b over 2a squared. Then what we can do is we can square root this whole thing. Well, I can square root the whole problem, but it's a little simpler just to square root the top and square root the bottom separately. When we square root, we're going to get a positive and negative answer. So we're just going to put that in the problem now. 
We can't really square root the top because of this subtraction problem, but the bottom we can. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of a squared is a, so we get this problem. We're then going to subtract b over 2a so that these cancel out, and we're going to do that from both sides. That's going to leave us with this, negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a equals x. Because these have common denominators, we can write the whole top as one cohesive thing, and we come away with this big long problem that we had at the beginning. Now, what we can use this for is to find the roots of any general form problem. So here I have a general form problem. I want to find the roots and the vertex. So I've already written down the quadratic formula. We're going to use it in this situation. Um, so what I need to do is identify my a, my b, and my c. So my a is usually in front of x squared. Here there's no number, so I can put in a 1. This is going to be negative 1. So every place I see an a, I can take it out and put in negative 1. I need times by negative 1 here and times by negative 1 here. Then I have b right here. It's a positive 10. It's very important that we remember the plus sign. So because it's positive in this first instance, we're not going to use positive 10. We're going to use negative 10. And in the second part, we're going to put in positive 10 because this one doesn't change it to negative. But I'm going to put it in parentheses. The reason for that is we want to square everything. If it's a negative 10 in there, we want to square the negative to make it positive. And then our last one is C. Again, important that we see it's positive. So we're going to take out our 1C in here and put in times 11. So we got times 11 there, times negative 1 there. Now we're going to do this math. We will have our roots, our x values of our roots. Obviously, every root has a y value of 0. So we've got negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared is 100 minus, we've got 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4, and negative 4 times 11 is negative 44. And our bottom here, 2 times negative 1, is negative 2. So from here, we can go negative 10 plus or minus the square root of, this is going to be 100 plus 44. So that's going to be 144 all over negative 2. So then we know we've got square root of 144 here. Well, square root of 144, if it didn't come out perfect, we would use this and just work with a, either a decimal or a radical expression. But this one comes out perfect, so I'm going to rewrite it as 12. So we're going to go negative two, 10 plus 12 is positive 2 over negative 2. So we've got a negative 1 as one of our possible roots. So negative 1, 0, I'm going to write that as one of my roots. And then I've got negative 10 minus 12, which is negative 22 over negative 2, which gives me a positive 11, so my other root is 11, 0. Now this is all great, but there's a third um, important part to this, is we need to know the vertex. Well, if you remember, every the roots are on both sides of the vertex, and the vertex is halfway between them. So we can average the roots to find the x value of the vertex. Then we can take that value put it into our original equation, and find the y value. Negative 1 plus 11 all over 2. This is how we average. Add them together, divide by 2. It's going to give us negative, or this is going to give us 10 over 2 is 5. So the x value of our vertex is 5. Now we need to find the y value. So I'm going to take 5, put it in for my x's. So we've got y equals negative 1 times 5 squared, put it in parentheses in case it's negative, plus 10 times 5 plus 11. So I'm going to get y equals negative 1 times 25 plus 50 plus 11. Remember, we can do this multiplication because of the adding around it 
y equals negative 25 plus 50 plus 11. And now we can just add negative 25 and 50 is 25 plus 11 is 36. And I have my vertex also. So roots, vertex, we can now graph this parabola. All right, this has been the quadratic formula. If there are any questions or you didn't understand something, please pause the video, rewind, and watch again. Thank you.